Hey there, friends. Jeff Fritz here, and I want to talk to you about some enhancements, some experiments that our friends at Iron Software have been going through and, and exploring with regards to working with PDF documents and a little bit of artificial intelligence. We already know that we can use Iron PDF to go and create PDF documents. But what if we could also use it to analyze PDF documents, dive in there and, and do a little bit of work to learn a little bit more about the contents of a document and be able to surface that so that our users can do more with some really complex documents. Let's take a look at some of the things that the folks at Iron Software have put together with their new Extensions AI library and tinker with it in a little experiment here and see how it works under the hood. For this sample, they've put together a little bit of code that uses the Iron PDF PDF Engine container, as well as Chroma DB, so that we have a vector database that can save all the information that's analyzed from our PDF documents. And we're also going to use a little bit of semantic kernel, which means we're going to bring in a little bit of open AI. Let's head over to the code and take a look at this sample, and then explore how it works and how you can configure it and try it out on your system. All right, so here's the sample running with .NET Aspire. And we've done that so that we can have our Iron PDF PDF engine running in a container off to the side, get that optimized. We can scale that and have it run and analyze as many PDFs as we need, generate PDFs all sitting there in a container on line two right here. We also have the Chroma DB container sitting there so we can save and work with content from there. And here's the sample website that they've built with Blazor ASP.NET Core version nine so that we can take a look and interact with that a little bit. Now on this sample, what they've done is they've put together three different ways that we can interact with and summarize data using Iron PDF and Semantic Kernel. First off, they put together a little demo that will go and analyze a URL and summarize it using Semantic Kernel and the new Iron PDF AI extensions. So here's the link to the article on Wikipedia about Elvis Presley. Clicking summarize, it's going out fetching that data and we're gonna get a little summary that pops up in that text box when it's done analyzing that data. And there we go. So some summary information about Elvis Presley, and this looks pretty accurate based on the content of what's on this Wikipedia page here. I'll just copy that real quick, and we'll take a look at what's on that page. And we can see it's a, it's a pretty long article here, all about Elvis, and we've got that generated and, and analyzed, and it reports back just a quick summary of, about Elvis right there. Now, that's nice to be able to go and analyze and summarize a URL. There's, there's features out there that are available on other sites, but you can do this now inside of your applications with the tools that Iron PDF provides. Now, we want to work with typically PDF documents. So let's summarize a PDF that is, is a little bit complex. It might be something that, that's hard for us to understand, but has something and, and rel relates to something that's important to us. So let me open this PDF over here and show you something that I want to learn a little bit more about. And this document is from the United States Library of Congress and the United States Copyright Office. This document was linked and, and sent to me all about how McDonald's can now repair their ice cream machines. I want to know why they're now allowed to repair their ice cream machines and what the problems were before. But I look at this document and it's 50 pages of legal information about what they're allowed to do, what they're not allowed to do, and, and all kinds of jargon in here that me as a, as a non-legal person doesn't really understand. So let's see if we can put this PDF into the Iron PDF tool and see what kind of summary it can give me. So I've dragged that document into 
the, the sample here, and it'll analyze that and give me a report right down here of some of the information that it found. And there, you saw how quickly it was between when I dropped it and when we saw the summary. And it says the U.S. Copyright Office um, issued a final rule that creates exemptions in the Digital Millennium Copyright Act regarding the prohibition on circumventing technological measures that restrict access to copyrighted works. Okay, so effective from October 28, it allows certain non-infringing uses of specified classes of copyrighted works for the next three years. Okay, that, okay, so, so I know that, that this means that as of October 28th, 2024, McDonald's can start doing this? Let's take a further step and let's, let's take not only that text analysis, but we can also chat and ask questions about that PDF. So let me drag that same PDF on here and let's, let's ask it a question about that PDF that we may want to know more about. Um, like, what does this mean by um, circumventing technological measures? And I'll ask the AI to report on what it means by that. Circumventing technological measures refers to bypassing or disabling technologies that control access to copyrighted works. So, under what circumstances can we do that? And I'll ask the AI. The Library of Congress determined that the prohibition against circumvention of technological measures that control access shall not apply for the next three years to persons who engage in certain non-infringing uses of specified classes. Okay. So this is very interesting that we're able to ask questions and get feedback from the AI about, in this case, a very complex legal document. And Clearly, we can take some of this information and use it in other places to generate not just summary information, but an FAQ about some of the documentation, some of the things that are happening that are stored inside of our documents and, and locked up behind this, this legalese. Let me take a few moments now and show you how these, these couple pieces fit together and how you can configure Iron PDF with the PDF engine to enable some of these features and, and take this sample code and extend it further to plug into your application. So here I am inside the program CS of the app host project for this sample, right? This is .NET Aspire, configuring all the things. And you see, I have a couple parameters that are defined up front here that are loaded out of app settings JSON. I'm not going to share those parameters with you. They're, they're private. They're things that are going to help run this application. And we'll talk about where they came from in just a second. Of course, the license key for Iron PDF, you know where you can, need to get that in order to work with Iron PDF. Check out the link to Iron PDF just below. We're going to add a reference to the Iron Engine. That's a container that, that we've set up in a previous demo here but has been extended and, and improved here so that we can go add that Iron PDF engine, add a resource so that we can interact with it very easily here with all of this configuration. The source code for this is included in the demo. You can check out that link just below in the description. We're adding a reference to Chroma DB, and there's a link to the Chroma DB integration available as well. I'm passing in these environment variables as configuration to the application, as well as references to the PDF engine. Make sure we wait for the PDF engine to be running before we start the website, and a reference to Chroma DB. Nothing too out there in how we configure the application, but we do need to configure Azure OpenAI or an OpenAI endpoint so that you can get in, connect, and, and let the large language model analyze your documents. 
So let me go over to the Azure portal and show you how I set up Azure OpenAI so that you can work with this demo. So here in the Azure portal, I've created an Azure OpenAI service. You can real quick, just create one and it will allocate and make this service available. And you'll see that it has some endpoints that are defined that we're able to go to. There are keys that are used to control access to this. We can also control the networks that folks are able to connect in and work with our OpenAI resource so that maybe you only want your services on Azure able to connect to it, or only folks that are coming from a specific network to be able to access and work with this. What's important though, is that we need to configure some models that are able to interact with and read data here. So I click on model deployments here on the left, and I can manage the deployments of the models for this open AI resource. When I click in here, you'll see I have two models that I have configured. I've configured a uh, GPT-4 model here. This is doing a chat completion type of interaction so that we can do that chat interaction. So I get a target URI, I get an API key there that I can work with. Don't worry about the URI because we're gonna be able to pass in and use it, the URI from our OpenAI service. That key though is important, as well as the name of this deployment. The other deployment that I have out here is using a text embedding uh, model with the ADA model. It's a simple model that we can use. Once again, it's got a target URI and it has a key to be able to access that. What's important here is that deployment name. We need to pass those deployment names in so that when we do connect to our OpenAI resource, it knows to do these types of interactions for chat and text analysis using the, um, the GPT-4 work and to do the embedded text analysis using the embedding uh, model that's available as well. So if I go back over to my code, that's where I'm passing in these values. The open AI endpoint is actually inside this keys and endpoint in the Azure portal for the open AI service, you'll see that I have an endpoint defined down here that I can use. The key for key one is the same key that was on the other pages. And I've assigned that and I have it in my app settings for this parameter. I also placed the GPT-4 name in this parameter inside of app settings, as well as that text embedding ADA deployment name I have assigned to this parameter. So all of those parameters will be passed in and assigned to my semantic kernel configuration in the website so it knows how to connect and interact with the OpenAI service using that configuration. Now, inside of our solution, we have this Aspire AI Services project that has the information in here already configured so that we know how to connect and generate PDFs and how to work with PDFs. Additionally, there's this document intelligence library here that was built that will connect and has the various methods all wired up as well as interaction with OpenTelemetry so that it will log information about summarizing documents, interacting with running queries and sending data back out to Chroma DB for interaction. Finally, here in the website, we, we have just a few methods to set up those interactions, including adding a PDF generator method here so that it knows how to go and configure and interact with that PDF generator service that we saw, as well as add document intelligence. Place all of that configuration in that extra project so that we can compile and use that inside of our website. So now, how do those pieces work that are actually summarizing and and working with the document. Back over here on the home page, when we did summarize URL up here, it actually did this summarize PDF. So if we take a look at that method, 
It calls document intelligence, summarized PDF, gets some result text, and placed it in the text box up there. So summarize URL is generating a PDF for whatever web page we pass in because it knows then how to take that text and analyze it using this summarize method. So it generates the PDF very quickly and summarizes. And we have, because of the open telemetry here, we have documentation about exactly how long that took. So here inside my PDF generator metric, I can click into it and I can start to see exactly how much time it took to do these interactions. So I'll click it again and we'll see it pop and show some more information about the work that it's doing on those documents as it analyzes and reports it right here in the trace. This is a great way for us to summarize and show information about what's going on inside of the application. And, and I'm thrilled that the folks at Iron Software have wired up and made open telemetry available from inside of their services. Now, the other features that they built, allowing us to summarize a PDF, they put a file input here that has a handle file upload method wired up to it. If we look at that, of course, it's going to open that file that's been sent in, copy it, and send it into the document intelligence to summarize that PDF, write out a little bit of summary information that is being bound and displayed on screen. So the, the summarize, we already saw how this works. It's calling doc summarize and returns it. So this is a feature that's being made available by Iron PDF's AI extensions using Semantic Kernel to load up and interact with that. Really, really cool. That ask question method that we see here, you can probably guess that the second file upload summarizes and, and memorizes that information, stores it in memory, so that when we do want to ask a question of it, there it is. It's going to pass in that text and return whatever response is being derived from the semantic kernel model and paste it into the summary block. Really cool and easy way for us to get our arms around how we can use AI, open AI, to analyze text that's already been built, it's already sitting there in PDF documents. Let's analyze that and make it into something that our, our less sophisticated folks who aren't subject matter experts in the content of that PDF, let's enable them to, to have the capability to learn what's going on there and interact with those experts to ask those follow-up questions that, that are typically going to be asked and, and we want to explore and dig deeper on the information that those subject matter experts provide for us. It's really great stuff and a first step into how we can do so much more with our PDFs beyond just generate content, generate a document, get the content out of it and put it somewhere. Let's actually analyze that and enable more folks to do more with that content. I want you to explore this demo a little bit. There's a link to the demo just down below. And of course, there's a link to go over to ironpdf.com Check it out, download a copy of that, register to get your license key, or buy a copy of that so that you can check out and do more with your documents inside of your applications and enable more folks to get more out of the content that they're creating and working with inside of your application. Thanks so much for watching.